Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Safety Meeting Podcast. I'm your host, Isaac Heckert. Have you ever been watching the credits roll after a movie and seen the description, grips? Have you ever wondered what a grip is? What does a grip do? Why do we need grips? Well, today we're going to find out. We have two very good grips here. Good grips? Good grips. That's weird to say. I'm going to keep that in there. Good grips. We have key grips with us today. A couple of key grips. Keys are the department heads on in uh, film sets and movie in the movie business. We have uh, Adam Shambor and Nick Lundstrom with us today, and they join us to tell us all about what it's like gripping, gripping and ripping. And uh, I learned a lot. I thought I knew as much as you could know about gripping, but I didn't know anything. They taught me a lot. It was a lot of fun. Uh, they drank a couple beers, and we had a good time shooting the grip. Ah. <laughs> uh, Set humor, right? Um, give me a break. It's my first uh, live show back since quarantine. These guys, uh, they came in and washed their hands and sat down. It might have been the first time these two grips ever washed their hands. Hey, oh, grip jokes. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't hit me again. Um, I really hope you guys enjoy this episode, learning about uh, what it's all about to be a grip and um, maybe just find some insight into the film business and what it's like, uh, you know, being around grips. If you're interested in working hard and strapping uh, cameras to stuff, maybe you should think about being a grip yourself. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. We really appreciate you tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Safety Meeting Podcast. Thanks. Uh, welcome back to the Safety Meeting Podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Isaac Heckert. Today's very special guests, we've got Adam Shambor and Nick Lundstrom. I'm pointing, but that's going to look weird because I'm either going to be in the middle or we're going to see all three faces at once. Uh, welcome to the show, boys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. The very special thing about these two gentlemen is that they are uh, grips. So what you don't know about grips is, uh, well, you probably don't know anything about grips, but uh, you know when you're watching the movie titles, it's the one thing that everybody always says, what's a grip? So that's what I want to open up with. What is your definition of what you guys do? I mean... You want to go or sandbags and lighters? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. We uh, we support camera and we carry uh, pretty much every other department that doesn't come prepared. Right. So uh, yeah. you mean the art department? Uh, any department. <laughs> any any department. department. Everybody comes and needs a C stand, sandbag, ladder. Hey, can you get this? Can you carry that? I mm -hmm. can't loosen this. Hey, we're, tall guy with the hat, come over here. We're in charge of camera support, mm -hmm. uh, lighting support. Basically, if a DP comes to us and says we need a camera. To go across this canyon, we got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So you guys have the coolest toys. Yeah, we have the dolly toys. sliders, cranes, jibs, techno yep. cranes. If it's going to get strapped to a car, bolted under a door frame, yep. tied to a train, if it's getting mounted somehow, it's your responsibility to do it and do it safely. We're we're engineers without a degree. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's essentially what yeah. it is. Well, yeah. like you said, you have to do it safety. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the other thing is we're we're also in charge of like the general safety and well-being of the crew too mm -hmm. you know if we got a two thousand pound rig above talent we got to figure out how we're going to do that safely yeah because so. last thing you want is the camera going through tom cruise's face yeah that would not be yeah. good or no. slipping on an apple box right yeah. <laughs> he'd probably live through it with all that uh, illuminati money that he has yeah, yeah. be fine yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the way that you guys get jobs is uh well let's just talk about the whole way the jobs happen and, and different crew members but like a, a director will put his treatment in, he'll get the award, he'll, he'll work with his favorite producer. The first question the producer is gonna ask to that director is who do you want to shoot this, right? Right. And then the director will go, my favorite DP or cinematographer is this dude. Right. And then he makes three phone calls, right? He calls his first AC, he calls his key grip, and he calls his gaffer, and then from there, those three department heads will call their staff and crew that out, right? Yep, yep. exactly. Cool, that's the end of the show. Thanks for watching everybody, we'll see you next week. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> um, so the, the way to keep uh, busy in town is to have many, many cinematographer friends, right? Is that is that it for you guys? Yeah, but also be good at your craft too. You yeah, know, that would help. Like, uh, and and come prepared, and I mean, do your do do your due diligence on being a grip. You know, to essentially know your know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, because you got to be likable, as I would say. I mean, I work with a lot of people that. You know, we grew circles around, and mm -hmm. but they're hilarious to be around. We love them. They're our brothers. They're our friends. Right. And that's where you'll like <clears throat> find more people that you'd like to be to be with and work around with more because you're gonna be spending 12, 14, 16 hours with them a day. Yeah. yeah. So if you hate that guy, 
you're going to replace them with somebody that you like, even if he works half as hard. Right. That's I mean, a look, reoccurring theme for every department, right? Yep. It's like, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. We're, we're, uh, we're spending more time with these people on set than we actually spend with our family. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it has to be, it has to be almost a marriage on set too. Right. Of who you're working with. Yeah. You got five husbands. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't ever pictured in my whole life that I would look at key grip in the face and go, Hey man, you got five husbands. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Yeah. I think the best way to associate, um, like the most famous reference to a grip in every any movie would be the Tropic Thunder scene. Classic. Oh my God. When exactly. Tom Cruise. That, that is exactly yeah. what a key grip does. Right yeah. there. Tom Cruise is talking to the whole crew. The movie's going like shit. And he's talking to the director and he's like, which one of y'all motherfuckers is the key grip? Because <laughs> I want you to punch him right in the face. <laughs> and that's what, I mean, you know, if the studio owner says, hey man, you want to keep working for this studio, you're going to punch this director, that dude's getting laid out. That's going to be the person on set that's going to actually key do that. grip. Honestly, if he was told by a producer, go punch that guy in the face without hesitation. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Hands down. Full pass. Yeah. A lot of You're people like, forget that. Free card. Uh-huh. A lot of people forget that. A lot that. of people forget the, the, yeah. the importance of their grips. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been on set with grips, with key grips that, you know, older guys that are in their 40s and their 50s that are well-respected. And, um, you know, one, there was one instance where this key grip took a, a battery block and threw it at the director and told him to, you know, go pounce in, take a long walk off short pier. Wow. He walked off set, told his guys, hey, take, you know, the rest of the night to wrap this thing. They had 13 hours of double time because they spent all that wrapping. Wow. Yeah. 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 So it still happens. I mean, we yeah. have very you know, sharp and heavy objects. In that's our right. Arsenal, I mean. And there's a lot of them. And there's 10 names for every single thing on your truck, too. Oh, oh that, yeah. And it's just in California. Yeah. You know, once you start going east, and you use triple, quadruple. Well, it's the number one. Sense. Yeah. The number one. Always. The butt plug. You got a butt plug? Yeah, we his, have a butt plug. It's his favorite piece of gear. Yep. I bet. I mean. You got three or four of those on you at all times, don't you? Them, all yeah. One for each husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they get out one of line, I husband. mean, we got to sort that out. Yeah. No. So, uh, on set, uh, we, we would show up, uh, and then, you know, every shoot's different, right? Yeah. But if there was a through line to your work day, would it, what would you say would it, it would be like a typical, like, let's say a commercial shoot, one day commercial shoot, what would your workflow be? Well, I was thinking about this before even coming, you know, the, the crazy thing is, is like art department has to focus on art department right yeah and there's a lot of layers to each department right you mm -hmm. know electric has to focus on powering the whole set and and other charging our phones charging our phones <laughs> that's right and other things right the grip department doesn't necessarily have to just focus on gripping like you know we'll get art department to come here and come to us and go we need a hundred feet of uh crushed velvet hun behind the set the day of right and we got to figure that out and they didn't talk about it on the scout didn't talk about it on the scout and then you got pas coming to us hey can you help us with these pop-up tents we need sandbags for this or you know electrics now coming to us and you know oh we actually need another uh 20 foot rail popped up in the grid and to, to hang some lights on the day it's like there's never a, a set task for grips it's mm. always like we got to figure out everything for the set right so they just I mean, hand you a problem and you have to kind of go with it and right you got to figure it out and All you got to have stuff on your truck to do it you gotta have everything right if you everything. don't you have to know that you don't have it and say you know what Let's do it this way instead. Instead of doing all this and you know working ten times as harder, mm -hmm. how about we embrace that and you try right. and lean into it. If if you're if you're what I've learned key gripping a lot is if you can try and push your ideas and to make make it your decision, mm -hmm. you as the you know the superior key gr or your DP or whatever, mm -hmm. that's when your DPs will will think of you. You're like, oh, you're actually a part of this. Right. You're not just some guy. Tell hey, go read lights. You're right. like, oh, you're actually right. here. Help, yeah, help me solve this problem. Well, you're here and you're seeing problems that I might not be seeing. Yeah. That I'm trying to fix, and all I'm doing is screwing it up even worse. Yeah. When it's like, why why is step twelve undoing step two? Yeah. And that's a that's a, a theme in almost every department yeah. uh, in the film business is making your boss's life easier. Yeah. Right. Making things more efficient or making things cheaper. And you make yourself invaluable. Well, that's how you get hired again. That's right. Because <laughs> I, I think a lot of people tend to fall in the trap of like, they get singularly focused on the one job that they're on. And they don't necessarily think about 
the jobs down the road. Right. And that some people kind of get, and I'm super guilty of this uh, a lot is, you know, I'll get upset about something that's happening on set, not realizing that my actions may be affecting my ability to get hired by that producer or that director again. And you never really know who's throwing your name around. I've gotten referrals from grips before. Yeah. Right. Cause in a director DP situation. Well, that's, a, that's it. That's the thing. Like, uh, Paul Jackaloni, when I, that they were the Jackalonis were the first people I ever worked for as a grip. And that was like the pivotal moment of being a grip is hearing these words from that man is there was another older grip working that day and he was giving me a hard time because you know i was new at it but he i remember paul stepped in one time because he he saw that i was struggling and he saw i was getting my butt reamed and he said hey calm down dude because this kid could be your boss someday mm -hmm. and that's the truth yep. whether it's a pa whether it's anybody on set treat him with respect because honestly they could be your boss someday mm -hmm. so you I never mean, know everybody's somebody's nephew know. Exactly. Well, people get opportunities that they shouldn't sometimes. Mm -hmm. I worked That's for, true. I mean, I've worked for uh, a, a key grip that this kid got handed an opportunity. And I mean, I took opportunities when I was 19, when mm -hmm. I was in this industry, and they were great. I was, you know, I had a guy walk off set one time because I was his gaffer at the time. I was 19 years old. He was in his 40s, and he's like, I'm not working for some snot nosed kid. Wow. Well, like, All right, dude, you can go home. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. But uh, people get handed opportunities where they shouldn't. And yeah. Luckily on that job, we hit the key grip, dropped the ball. We needed a dolly. We needed a jib. We needed a this and that. Mm -hmm. And it was, the, it was the biggest part of the job. If it wasn't for that, we were done for. There was no, there was no shoot. Mm -hmm. San Diego? So that was a different one. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we, we ended up constructing a, a moving jib that all had a speed rail and mm -hmm. fittings and stuff. It was just like a, it was a monstrosity, but it worked. Right. And I even had to get in the pool and pull it down as he was pushing. And if that key grip had didn't have us there or had, he didn't have any solutions, so we were the ones that came up with that. Right. And, and so, that, and like what we were talking about before this, it's like that was a good point you brought up, Nick. Because in my eyes, ten thousand hours. Mm -hmm. You want to call yourself a key grip? Ten thousand hours. You want to call yourself a dolly grip? Ten thousand hours. Some of these um, younger cats coming into the game buying a grip truck right away and just considering themselves key grips i'm sorry in my eyes that's you're not a key grip right you know you have to put your time in and you got to learn rigging you have to learn dolly you have to learn every aspect about this job before you even become the boss making the calls mm -hmm. otherwise you don't know what you're doing yeah how can you how can you tell somebody to go do something when you yourself don't even know how to do exactly. that job. Exactly. How many days on set do you think it would take to actually hit that with no OT? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, the, are we talking union days here? Yeah. Like, five days <laughs> weeks? Like, <laughs> I would say, I mean, I would say it's an average of 12 hours because you're going to have some yeah. days with overtime and some days yeah. are going to be a flat 10. You're, you're pretty much guaranteed 12s. Yeah. Very rarely do you get 10s unless right. you're doing a union one day, two day commercial. Then it's, right. Or TV or. So let's just say you work 200 days a year mm -hmm. which would be a lot for me i don't work that much that'd be a lot for all of us let's say 150 yeah. yeah 150 150 days yeah which is great when you start thinking about that because everybody else works um 312 or something well with weekends right so it's 365 minus 104 right so you work about 250 days if you have a nine to five job yeah. right so in our world, even if you work a lot, that's 150 days. So you still have an extra 100 days off of versus everybody else. Which is another bonus about this yeah. industry. And you're probably making good money. So that's 1,800 yeah. hours a year. So divided by 10,000. About 10 years. Yeah, it's almost. It's about eight. Right? Yeah, about yeah. 10 years. So what's... Uh, how many hours a year did we do? 1,800. 1,800. So what's 1,800 times 50? Wow, like their whole career? No, just I'm I'm thinking of an hourly thing. Fifty an hour is like a normal rate. Oh, the rate? That's right. ninety thousand. Ninety thousand. So theoretically, ninety thousand before taxes. Yep. If you're working, you know, hundred fifty days out of the year. But yet again, those jobs you're working DPs that, hey, I need this favor here and mm -hmm. there, you know, sometimes jobs are overbid, sometimes jobs are underbid. Yep. It all balances right. out. Well that's interesting to know that 
like I said, I, I worked I think 127 jobs one year mm -hmm. and hit it and got into the lower level of bottom tax bracket and I got screwed on my taxes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's kind of interesting to know. Yeah. It's interesting in the commercial world. Uh, my year is pretty much evenly split 60, 40 between 60% time car jobs and 40% invoice. Right. And, um, stop doing 1099 jobs. Everyone. Please, for the love stop of God, it. I stop can't because I, I'm no longer a guild member. <laughs> so. I well, got to gotta take it where I get it. I got to get in where I fit well, in. Well, of course, we all do, but yeah. my God. Um, they're illegal, by the way. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and the, but but who's going to come get them? The, well, when they uh, get got, it's 10,000 yeah. per man, person. I have got to Ooh. get my gender neutral pronouns down. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Someone's going to be coming through that That's door. That's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, my last job before all this went down, it was a promo for, let's just say it's a larger basketball movie that might be coming out. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. And, let's uh, just hope that Joe wasn't on it. He wasn't. Oh, thank God. I would not work with Joe. We I would not either. We're not going to say Joe's last name. No, we're everybody not. Everybody knows, which everybody Joe knows we're what about. Joe we're talking about. And uh, <laughs> the stand in for uh, the main talent had uh, like a little runny nose. Yeah. Uh, which doesn't really have anything to do with this story. But my uh, my buddy Nick that I was telling you about, that quick guitar center, he was PAing with me. Yeah. So I go, it's a two day shoot, one day pre light, one day shoot. And I, I'll give this big speech about set equality and g gender neutrality and how everybody, if they feel disrespected, they need to come to me and say something. <laughs> uh, about halfway into the, the shoot day, Nick says something off the side of his mouth. And I just launched the nukes at him in <laughs> front of 150 background, like all the client from this studio for this movie about basketball that could be coming out soon. And I'm just like, hey, listen to me, you piece of shit. And I'm just <laughs> screaming at him. You like the, Rick and Morty style. Well, yeah. Like the, the South Park guy with the big glasses, the big Oakleys. Yeah. The, the principal. PC yeah. principal. Yeah, PC principal. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, every, I realize everybody's looking at me. I'm like, I got to cool it. And then I walk away. And the producer comes up, throws his arm around me. He's like, are you okay, dude? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's just like, I, that guy's like a brother to me. I can talk to him however I want to. He's like, yeah, but those are my clients. You can't talk right. like that in front of them. So that kind of reverts back to the, the whole, like, you never know who's listening on yeah. set. Well, also, like kind of what Nick brought up earlier is... You know, you can be good at your craft. You can be the best grip on this earth. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that set etiquette or that personal, like that personality that everybody wants, you know, you're not going to get hired. You know, if you're just rolling around set like well, a complete ass. You're not going to get the job done. Yeah, you're not going to. Well, you're not fulfilling the job 100% because it's part personality and it's part knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that was a side tangent, but. Yeah. What do you guys, when you were coming up, when you were very early in your grip, grip careers, what's the most embarrassing thing that you could remember now that's like, oh, duh, I mean, every grip knows that, but... Like, I mean, mine was the, just a couple months ago. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's still coming up, as you'd say. Yeah, he's still learning. <laughs> oh, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I didn't know what a speed clip was, and I was working with a very prestigious key grip that I would actually really wanted to go work for that company because I'd heard a lot about him, and I was like, man... I think I would fit in there and I would also love to say, Hey, I work for these guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it was just me and him on the stupid music video in a stupid house. And, uh, we had to build a projection screen. Okay. So, so on the day I had to take a 20 by bleach muzz mm -hmm. and build an 18 foot frame and wrap it. And I was like, well, how are we going to tie this to that? So he's like, Oh, you speed clips. And I'm like, What's a speed clip? You know, <laughs> and he's like, what are you and, doing here? And he's like, <laughs> he's like, go look in the truck for, you know, this, he explained it. And I went and got him and we figured it out. But I mm -hmm. had, I just had no clue. I never used one before. You right. Know, probably like three, four years. I'd probably, eh, who knows? Mm -hmm. And, uh, there's a lot of little specialty things that I've definitely learned. And that's what you need to do is you need to work with a lot of different people. Yeah. Because yeah. then you see who's got what in their trucks mm -hmm. and you're like, I didn't even know this existed. Exactly. But also Something everybody also super simple, like a stupid piece of plastic. They just, mm-hmm. But it's also probably called five different things. Yeah, right? that's the problem. It's yeah. like, you know, one key grip will call, you know, coming up. Because, again, Nick and I are now to a point where I... I started in 2012. Yeah, I and started in I started 2014. Paid work. Mm -hmm. so, so, I guess, you know, we're, we right. are key grips. That's right. Yep. Yep, that's I'm right. key grip now. That's right. I got but, two years on this guy. That's all right. Uh, and you're younger. That's okay. Um, it's not a contest. Not a contest. It's a race, but it's not a contest. It's a race, but it's not a contest. It's a big old rat race. That's right. Depends on what department you're in. Then. Um, 
Yeah, every key grip calls something different. So they get, you know, you could be working for one key grip versus the other, and one guy would call it a butt plug, one guy would call it a, you yeah. know, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you got to adapt to that. You got to figure out. And like, most of it's not PC, right? Most of it's. Oh, God, well, no. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few things that they tell us not to tell it anymore, and you're like, well, you're messing with history here. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not, like, I'm not changing a word. Not, not that it's being offensive. I'm not saying, hey, you're a butt plug, even though he's being no. a butt plug. But mm-hmm. it's like. Well, that's just what it, it's called. I'm I mean, sorry. I mean, I don't know I'm where it sorry. came from, but. this, uh, Yeah, I mean, it's like, this stuff's old. Like, this C-stand. Are you, are you offended by the word C-stand? Mm-mm. So, why are you offended by, like, a butt plug? Right. Speaking just, of which, I'm pretty sure every C-stand, most C-stands are o- older than us, by the way. Yeah. Just got to throw that out there. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I even bet that C stands right there. Well, that one's pretty new. Mm, that one's pretty new. Yeah, that's pretty, that's been this one's this one's photo because it's painted yeah. black. Yeah. Um, what's the what's the one thing on the truck that has the most names? Like one piece of gear that's like, man, you could call this fifty different things. Uh, Apple boxes have a bunch of different names for them. Yeah. Um, Carlini's different kind of clamps. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people get confused when you're talking about like which combination you need. Or that's like a clamp to a wall, to a grid, to a pipe, mm-hmm. or you yeah. just need something to drill in, or yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd say the most is it clamp clamp material on a grip draw. It's I called guess, different. I guess types. specialty rigging stuff, right. especially when it comes to five eighths kits, rods, uh, little tiny adapter pieces that you're doing car rigging, and mm-hmm. you know it's doing math. It's really annoying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> grips doing math. Oh, math. <laughs> yeah, give me like. <laughs> Four eighteens and a twenty-five, maybe. Um, speaking of math, um, this doesn't have anything to do with math. What's the the hierarchy from? Uh, so the the department has a key grip. Yep. Right, and then the next guy down is the best boy grip. Best, best boy, boy grip, yeah. and then the only other couple of names I know there would be the dolly grip. But is there a ranking for that? Yeah, I'd say your you have your, a pay rate. Yeah. yeah, is is your difference? You have your key rate. You have your best rate. And then usually your best boy rate and your dolly grips rate or your special grips rate mm-hmm. is the same. relatively the same. So it's twenty five fifty dollars difference at that. Sometimes and then you have per day, rate. not per hour. Correct. Right. Oh. But al- but also you have your key rigger. Mm-hmm. I would say they're different. I mean, they're same well, department. A crew. It's a different crew. Right. So More of a lateral kind of thing. Right. You got your key rigger, and then same thing. Well, your rigging crew will sometimes make less. One because they're working less hours, mm-hmm. and it's usually a rigging. It's usually a union job. By the time you're talking a rigging crew, because right. two day commercial, you don't get the luxury to send no. another group of five, six guys in there to go and set up all this stuff. Right. You might get a pre rigged day. Right. But you might get a half day that they're gonna try yeah. and snake some shots in on. Well, we all might get our own day when we go back to work. It might be uh, grip and electric day, and then <laughs> art day, and then yeah. Oh there, man. Wouldn't no less. No more than fifteen people on set at one time. That'd be nice. Um, yeah, I mean that's. that's I mean that's the thing gonna, I was thinking about. It's just going to slow everything down. It, it's, yeah. it has to. There's there's no coming back to this like that. Yeah, no. The one day shoots are gone. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's a two hour interview. Right. Even uh, then, that's going to be a fourteen hour day. It, yep. Where yeah. it should have been. We're going to be eight. going in earlier. Which the, the days of talent availability. Those things were like, oh, this person is only available for an hour. Yeah. Cool. We're going to get another talent because they're just going to have to be more flexible with yeah. with our needs of being right. able to go in and you know if it is a 50,000 square foot stage what's to say that like you guys can't be rigging something in the corner while the art department's building on the opposite far corner right, there's right. a lot to figure out but how much <clears throat> let me ask you this in your experience how often have you been on set when you have been in a building that size and you do have people bouncing back and forth and how just you know fucked is it it's just mayhem even yeah. then even though you have the space even though you have the manpower mm-hmm. we did a job in santa clarita that he was king and i was besting we had seven sets oh, across yeah. Jesus. like five different stages and one out in the parking lot like 200 feet of track mm-hmm. and i was like production i need a golf cart to like run around just go just from, from one place point to this to, drop yeah. gear off I have, right. to, I have things to do and they wouldn't provide it so i just drove my personal truck around yeah mm-hmm. and it's like you just you, know. you have to at that point. I mean, that, many, that day was slow enough as it was. That, yeah. that day we had so much to do, and we still did it within probably 14, 16 hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now you want to talk about, okay, now, sorry, you're, you guys are only allowed in here from this amount of time. Well, cool, it's going to take us two hours longer than that to do it. I yeah. mean, our 399 brothers are probably going to cringe at this, but how many times have we used our personal vehicle? Yeah. 
just to do that task. I pulled, like, a, I pulled a techno crane with my Jeep. Yeah. A 50 foot movie bird. We've pushed a, a movie car dirt. with yeah. your Jeep. I mean, whatever it takes to get the shot done or to get the equipment there, that's what grips do. Like, yeah. we don't sit there and try to think about hierarchy. If our DP goes, hey, man, we need that, yeah. we're going to get it to him it's no matter what. Tool. Yeah. And that's and that's why grips like to park on set, is mm-hmm. because we have pickup trucks that oh we need a pickup truck put a back camera in it. Or oh dude, we've, we have to move all this stuff on the truck the beach. sitting outside. Yeah. You know, in our eyes is legendary because it has done so many things mm-hmm. on set that I mean that truck's lived a a pretty big life. It's been <laughs> yeah. a, few, a few music videos now. Oh, that's yeah. right. It's it's been yeah. driving down the beach in San Diego. Yeah, um, chasing other Broncos, shooting car to car. It's been out in the desert. Yeah, uh, Melody so Ranch, big blue, out of the blue back sky. Of the well, that's a good segue to the most recent feature of that truck, <laughs> and it's in the most recent Florida Georgia Line video. And you guys are also in that video as yep. well, right? What's the name of that track? I love my country. I love my country. <clears throat> and when you, you got so you guys, you want to? I don't want to assume that I know. I know a lot about this story because I've been chatting with you guys all day. But yeah, um, tell me about that. Like, how did that all come about? Well. Uh, Dylan Schneider, he's a DP, and Mikey G, he's also a, a DP. Uh, they're just like, hey man, do you want to go camping up in Palmdale? You know, do a little off road trip. Mm-hmm. We got some content we need to shoot for uh, a country music video. And I was like, yeah, get me out of the house. I mean, of course, we did our due diligence with social distancing and we were safe about it. But that's, we just, did what we always do we just go on an off-road a little mini off-road trip for a day and they were shooting it with the camera and an iphone the entire time mm-hmm. and a week later they were sending out links of floor georgia line and yeah <laughs> we're, we're all in it and i was like this is awesome nice yeah we're gonna play a clip of it right And that was a clip of, uh, what's the name of that music video? Love My Country by Florida Georgia Line. YouTube, don't take it down. Um, my, my videos aren't monetized anyway, so I can I mean, we didn't sign the NDA on it, so. Ooh. Just throw on. There you go. Yeah. I can, don't, so take I, it, don't, don't take it down. I could YouTube. file a dispute technically no. claiming that uh, you own the intellectual property. Exactly. I mean, so there you go. That's why I said it. Because I was like, lawyer, don't, th- don't throw it down. I'm looking. Well, BMG has an attorney. So. Yeah, we wouldn't win that. No, no, no. Mm-mm. They have a couple, couple more Florida Georgia bucks than we do. Yeah. yeah. Um, we were just Must talking on nice. the break though about other stuff that we've been in and the opportunities that we get. Um, I think the the f- most famous story that gets there's you know there's always those folk folklore stories about actors not being able to pull something off, so a crew member has to jump in. Right. And I think my favorite one is a Budweiser commercial about 10 years ago maybe I, who knows if this even really happened but it's just a big wide open shot yeah and a you know big tractor trailer is supposed to pull up and stop and the guy's supposed to get out and open the budweiser thing and the actor can't drive a, a, a big a rig. big rig yeah <laughs> so the uh it, they say is either the key grip or you know it, it makes more sense to me that transpo would have done it yeah but they or yeah they throw the key grip in there and, yeah Put a Budweiser shirt on him and all the time. Pulls the truck up. Yep. Yep. And there's I mean, the Key Grip probably had Budweiser on the truck, so they're like, <laughs> guy's already signed up. This guy's already signed up. There you go. Like, are you I'll... drunk enough to drive this truck? It's like, you know it. Interestingly I mean, enough, all Budweiser jobs are non union. Really? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of big companies out there that are strictly non union. Yeah. I've even yeah. run into that because I'm not union and he's union. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you run into jobs where they're like, can't hire union people. It's yeah. like, well, you can't tell me that. Yeah, Yeah, because that's technically against the law, too. Yeah, Yeah. I get that. That's the first question I get on a non-union shoot from a producer. Can you give me a list of non-union crew that you you really like? You can't ask that. Well, I get it. I'd probably say 80% of my jobs, that's the first thing that producer asks me. No, they're going to ask the question, but you just, if if they want to start on that game, Mm -hmm. then you just have to play your politics. And you're like, cool, this guy, Mr. Uh, Slambo Shambauer over here, Mm -hmm. that's that's his name on the call sheet. That's right. Guy named Hootie Who on the call sheet. They don't know his name. Well, I tell the producers all the time, if you don't want to get flipped, Hire union. Yeah, they don't have anything to gain. Right. If you if you hire an all non union, and and every show that I've ever been on that's ever been flipped, it's guys that want to get in. Yep. 
it's not guys that are already in. Absolutely. Pay the rate, pay 100%. the quote, and that pay everybody fair. Yep. yep. And no one's calling in anything. Yeah. Have good crafty. Because no one cares. Well, that, those days no, are over. Yeah, I know. God. Well, now, not with me on set. I'm just going to bring a smoker. <laughs> yeah. It's going to bring a big trailer. Be like, oh, lunch. Yeah, sorry, other departments. There you go. But that's a good point. It's yeah. like, we're not here because, and I might get criticized for this, but, and of course, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely 80. Like, that is my, you know, that's my home. But That's the union number for the grips. Yeah, sorry. That mm. Local 80. But also, it's like, Sometimes you're trying to appease your DP. You're trying to appease. You're just happy to be there. Even though mm-hmm. your union doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to call every single thing out. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's benefiting you and, and, and it's the right job and it makes you happy, like, of course you want to be there. Yep. Right? So, exactly what you're saying. Just because, you know, your union doesn't mean that we don't want to be there. And you we're should be hiring union this. people, too. You, you should because we're more experienced. Going safety classes. You have... People yeah. actually are interested and put time and effort into their career. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to go union for five years, mm-hmm. and I've gotten to 27 days every year. Mm-hmm. And contract services pushes me to 80, 80 pushes me to this, and it's just a big runaround. Yeah. Right, and it's the requirement is 30 union days a year. 30 for days, yeah. So it took me union. four years just to, for the same roundabout that Nick's yeah. going through right now. Nick's probably had it three times now. Yeah, and because of uh, just. I just the get the runaround political for, aspect of it for us. If you want to join the union, you would normally join as a second AD first, but in order to do that, you need 600 PA days. Yeah. But is that, the, are you talking the union or the guild, the guild, Okay. the director's yeah. guild? I call it a union, but I'm yeah. inaccurate all the time. Still want to get you, you know, shot at. Or yeah. <laughs> Good luck Shots finding fired. anyone that ever works at the DGA <laughs> ever. And then, uh, if you want to forego that, you can start as a first AD with 400 days and 120 prep days, so 520 yeah. days. They have to be on a time card. Plus your initiation fee. Oh, my God. It's based off the number of days of your first shoot. Yeah. So there's some guys that have paid 15000 to get in. There's some guys that have paid 2000 to get in. Now, yeah. is there a yearly? So we have we have 365 days to start. So the moment I get that first day mm-hmm. and it's on the local lady books, mm-hmm. I have an, an entire year to get 30 days. And then it, those days will drop off. Mm-hmm. Do you have the same in your guys'? Is- no, it can take you as long as it wants to take. My first year that I actually tried to go for it, I got on a feature. It was like 42 days. Mm-hmm. It flipped the second day. And I thought I was in the clear. I was like, heck yeah, right place, right time. Mm-hmm. And they ended up not being able to pay their dues on the production side. And they never, they never put it to print. They never put it to film. And so I lost all those days. Mm. And it was just like that for four years. It was like, this happened, this happened, this happened. It's, it's pretty hard. Yeah. It's pretty difficult. You can't get in the club till you're already in the club. Yeah. Well, then there's guys that come in that move out of here from out of state, and mm. they're here for a month. They hop in with the right guys, and they're, right. in, and they're, in, they're in within their first year. But that's yeah. why Nick and I are very we're, – we're kind of choosy and kind of in a way clicky that way, like – we had to do it. You got to do it too. Like mm-hmm. you're not gonna get a full ride, you know. Yeah. Well, that's where people I think get bad taste in the mouth for union. Yeah. In many different ways, but like, like I said, I've I've been working with people that I trained. Not saying that I'm some big trainer and a huge grip or anything. It's just I know the right way to do most things mm-hmm. mainly. And uh, those guys are in, and they're union union dolly grips now. There's union these guys now, and they are just you know. They, they boast it up and they think they're all this hotness when you're like, dude, I will. Like, I, you, I saw you, you on your first day. I'm like, you haven't built a fly swatter. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you've never once in your life, like, actually done a serious rigging day. And that brings yeah. me that brings me back to exactly what I said earlier. It's like, you got to put your time in. If you want to be a key grip, you got to put your time in. You got to know what you're doing. Yeah. If you're, if you're a key grip who's never built a fly swatter, mm-hmm. how are you going to call yourself a key grip? You know? So for those at home who didn't know what a grip was when they started watching this episode or listening yeah. to this episode, we should tell them what a fly swatter is because oh. it sounds like something pretty easy. Like, oh, I'm just no. going <laughs> to get a stick and like make something I can swap flies I'll with. I'll let Nick explain this one. So you take a piece of heavy machinery, like a crane lift, and then you build a, either a bounce or a piece of diffusion in the size of like a anywhere from a 12 by 12 to a 20 by 20 frame. And you support it all off the basket. So if you have to essentially have a light or a bounce or something to control the sunlight way stretched over your talent but your camera has to be able to move freely underneath it or not see 
your stands are, you know, you don't have the ability to rig something in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, it's just basically a, a very dangerous way to put uh, a lot of heavy weight over people. Um, they are the probably dangerous things that we ever have to rig. Mm -hmm. And uh, people don't take it that way. It's because typically it, an outside thing, though, right? Yeah. It's, we've done them in stages. I've done them in the abandoned Hawthorne Mall. I've done them... Uh, that place is a death trap. Yeah. yeah. I went on a scout. <laughs> it's uh, the coolest place in the world, but it's a death trap. On a scout, uh, a PA walked into one of the... Where the escalators go down on mm -hmm. the first floor. Oh. Just, I mean, there's, you know, there's no lights it's in there. It's an open it's hole, there. yeah. Yeah, it's an open hole. It's yeah. probably about 10, 15 feet. And he fell and split his face and mm. had to get emergency ambulance. And this is a scout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, I did a bunch of Nike I stuff in there. They wanted to do, like, indoor soccer tournaments. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Drone racing. They wanted to do some stuff up, up on the other, upper deck, and there's no railing up there. It's mm -hmm. like, guys, we're – the crew can go up there, but I'm not putting any talent right. up there. Yeah. But exactly what Nick was talking about is, like, Again, we're in charge of the safety and well-being of the crew. Mm -hmm. We have two 500 pounds above talent. Like mm -hmm. You got to make sure that you're building that fly swatter correctly. Yep. You got to make sure it's safe. If there's 50 mile per hour winds and above, you're not flying that thing. Yep. You know, you get a non-union grip with his own truck. It says, oh, I'm a key grip who's never built a fly swatter before. There's a big problem right there. Yeah. Well, he's probably not going to suggest to build one. Well, no. If the DP is like, I want, I want a fly swatter. Yeah. Th they got to do it. Oh, yeah. You know? And then that's where you came in. It's like, don't be afraid to hire union grips on your non-union shoots because mm -hmm. we're going to be there to support you. And the whole crew and, and production and the DP and the director, we're going to try to accomplish that shot safely and and beautifully. You know, like, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're trying to – we're there to help you. Yeah. Have you ever – been forced to decide to choose safety over your relationship with someone that you work with yes yes mm. absolutely over and yeah. yep. i've I lost have, work because of it me too yeah. yep. i've questioned keys yeah i've questioned ad's yeah i've questioned dp's mm -hmm. i had one dp tell me she goes oh well my key grip said we could put a fly swatter over here and i pulled up the osha thing the parking lot was surrounded in telephone wires mm. every single corner had a telephone pole on it mm -hmm. and wires all around and she's like oh yeah we're gonna put it over here and arm it over the building and it's like first of all there's no way you're going to get it underneath those cables and over that building. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, you have to be 200 feet from that power line. And then, oh, no, my key grip said this. And I'm like, well, your key grip's not here today. Right. I'm here today. Yeah. We're not doing that. Yeah. I'm not going to see a death. I'm not going to kill somebody. Nope. Mm -hmm. The first time I lost Nike as a client, we were shooting uh, downtown at night with children, mm -hmm. another soccer thing. And from we were shooting on the – we built a soccer field on the top of a parking deck. And the photographer was like – Oh, those train tracks down there look awesome. Nope. I want to shoot from up here. I nope. want them walking down mm -hmm. the train tracks from across the street. And I was like, there's no way you're going to do that. We can nope. put them on the sidewalk next to the train tracks. No. Oh, the train tracks look cooler. I'm sure they do. This has already happened. But the train's not running right now. I was like, do you, you don't have the train yeah. schedule. You don't yeah. have the, the producer was like, down those trains. No, just take the talent down to the sidewalk and let's just see what it looks like from the frame. So I get like six or seven eight-year-olds down there and about two blocks away this uh cargo van starts doing donuts in the center of the intersection and starts popping shots yeah oh, up in the great. air yeah and the producer on the walkie is like so in that scenario from the parking deck there was a row of like metro tracks mm -hmm. and then we're across those i took them safely through the intersection and i went over and like kind of this, so this is parking deck, yeah. and this is camera. So I had to cross them this way, this way, and this way to get. And there's, so there's train tracks here and train tracks here. And the producers like come straight back to the parking lot. I'm like, no, I can't. Like I'm gonna get them home safely. I'm gonna put me between them and the gunfire. But I'm gonna, you know, so I cross them back through the lights. The shooter's over here, and he had already peeled off. He's gone. But in the time that it got, I got them back safely. I got instantly fired when I got back up here because I wouldn't travel the And that's the fine. Minors. Yeah. yeah. If you get fired for yeah. that, mm -hmm. by all means, I'm fire me. Take fine. Away. I'm happy. Here's my here, walkie. Here you go. There you go. I'm see out. ya. Bye. See you later. Thanks for, my, thanks for my short day. Yeah. Yeah. I get to go home, see my family. Thanks. Yeah. And then the second time was we're in the ACS warehouse, which is the most famous warehouse in downtown. Yep. And they want this kid to like climb up this, this ladder and just start walking across the beams the beams yeah. no i had a one inch crash mat because <laughs> yeah. on the scout they talked about him like kind of hanging from this one pole and like falling like four yeah. inches i was like all right i want a two foot crash pad 
Yeah. They're like, okay, they got me the little two inch thick right. one. Piece of memory foam off yeah. someone's queen mattress at home. So I go to the bathroom. I come back. This kid's 20 feet in the air walking across the thing. And I'm like, you need to come down right now. And the Nike client's like, we don't have the shot yet. And I was like, tough. That's too bad. Yeah. And then I get a call two weeks later. Hey, there's another Nike job coming up. I'm like, sweet. And the, uh, they, they have a lead AD on that. And yeah. he's like, you're not on it. But the thing is, then you have to ask them. You, the sad part is you have to ask them a question. Mm -hmm. Like, you would think a, a kid crossing an I-beam 20 feet up would be a bad idea, right? Mm -hmm. But in their brain, they're trying to get the shot. But the sad part is, is you have to. And I've, I've had this happen with They don't Pete know what Griff. the shot takes to get, though. Well, they not just like, want the shot. Right. But you have to. Takes. Right. So you have to ask a question. Like, what do you think the problem is going to be when that kid falls and breaks his head or kills himself? What do you think that that's going to, how, how is that going to look on you right on now? Your brand. Yeah. On your brand yeah. or your you as your position as being a client here today, you technically are making the calls. Mm -hmm. How's that going to look on you? Yeah. And I've had to ask that to key grips before that I've worked under, you know, bring it to them as a question. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you always, in my experience, you always come with a problem and a solution. Yeah. You say, hey, AD, we have this safety problem. This mm -hmm. guy is whatever. And, and, you know, drunk, stoned, all out of his mind. He's dropping shit. We need to get him out of here. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And then nine times out of ten, they're like, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Crisis averted. Got to deal with the next crisis. Yep. Yeah. And then that way, as a grip, you get what you want. And you just, like I said, you kind of have to implement that. into. Right. You have to implement right. their answer into your mind so that you think it's your idea. Exactly. But the bummer well, is, is like you come to them because with general concern about anything, whether mm -hmm. it's a good idea or we should be doing it this way or whatever. But the bummer is, is you got to like exactly what Nick said. You got to put it in their brain like it was their idea. It's like, no, you hired me for this job for yeah. a reason. Exactly. So if I come to you with a solution or a problem or whatever it be as a key grip, just take my advice about it. Take yeah. take my first word that it's a you know yeah it's gonna hold up the first time. I, I shouldn't have to explain myself. Yeah, there's two things. I've had a couple of situations where it's not that the key grip was incorrect. It was that he wanted to provide a solution for the team to get the shot. Right. And it was on the fly. We didn't plan it on the scout. We didn't talk about it in the pre-pro. We didn't do any of that stuff. So I love problem solvers, right? And mm -hmm. I, in my safety meetings, I always say, hey, guys, best idea wins. There's no ego here. Between the 50 of us, there's a 1,000 set days. You've all done shit differently. Let's just do the thing, the most efficient and safe way to go home. But inevitably, something will come up. Right. And it's like, oh, we want to do this. Uh, and either a key grip or a stunt rigger or somebody will say, it's possible. We can do it this way. Mm -hmm. And if the back of my brain goes, I don't feel good about it, yeah. I'll still shut it down. Yeah. And it's that's the, uh, that's when I'm looking directly into the face of the director, and I know I'm never going to see him again. But you know what? That's your job. That's why you're there. Mm -hmm. You're looking at, you know, you're, you're there to I implement the time schedule, but also the safety of everybody on set as a first AD. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, we call it an only fail position. Yeah. Because... Uh, you're only going to work with people until you don't get one of the shots on the board or something goes long, whether it's your f fault or not. And that's sad that it's yeah. dis uh, disposable like that. Because totally. at the end of the day, you were there just to simply make sure an accident does not happen. Well, you're just there. How ironic is it, though, that you get hired and we get paid good money to do our jobs. Yes. Mm -hmm. But every one of us says, you know, me and you were talking over there, oh, fuck, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I could do this job better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost every department gets oh. that. Oh, yeah. every professional so many times 10 15 20 years tops but that goes back to the young kid coming in just thinking that he that, that this is just owed to him like he you know he well, did it, it once it or twice in, it comes in with experience it's yeah. like you've seen you've seen a lot of people make a lot of mistakes we've all seen a lot of people make yeah. mistakes we have um yeah we and we, we all have we've all made mistakes yeah. that's how we learned unfortunately and um yeah it's, it just seems kind of ironic that we get paid so well and we are about like held in such high standards by so many people mm -hmm. but yet again you make a you make a, a simple decision simple safety call get that kid off the i beam you know cross the street over here boom you're and done it's just like how ironic is that it, yeah. but it's uh 
you can I think there's some some type of like cinematic blindness that happens sometimes when you oh, get wrapped absolutely. up in your creativity. I've seen it <clears throat> on both sides. Like when I when I I directed for a few years and I could tell that I wasn't wearing my AD hat when I was on set as a director. I was like, man, I really got to shoot this and I got to shoot that. And I was blowing time on things that didn't need it. And like if I had just directed as an AD for the day, it would have been more efficient. And, and I was looking at stuff like, oh, what else can I get? I need more B-roll. I need to do this. Right. It's just like this thing that overtakes you when you get you've been waiting for that opportunity your whole life. Well, it's and time then, time that's against you. Yeah, you you're, know? you're under the knife. You're mm -hmm. under the knife. Big time. Yeah. And everyone's – I've even had to sit producers down with this when they're like, oh, we don't have – an extra five hundred dollars to get you this guy that you need for these two days, mm -hmm. um, or you know, whatever. You don't, we don't have the budget for that. And I go, okay. So what's your budget? Let's say your budget is X amount. So if we break that down to a minute, and let's break that down to seconds, cost you, you know, just for me to rig this car, it's gonna take me thirty minutes. That's mm -hmm. gonna cost you in dollars five thousand dollars. <laughs> so if I can do that in twenty minutes, or I can do that in fifteen minutes, and I, I'm gonna cost you another thousand dollars, it's gonna save you fifteen thousand dollars here. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to put that thought again. You have to put that well, thought in their brain. But it's something that just they, they might not think about because they're blind. Right. They That's have one so thing I run into to get over. all the time on scouts. Everybody wants to just burn through it in like an hour. We're yeah. going to shoot here. We're going to shoot here. Yeah. We're going to shoot here. Make your list. Send it to me. Never works. I no. I want to do like a four hour scout. Even yeah. though I have six hours of scheduling to do after that. Like it's not in my best interest for that one day of time. And that's appropriate. But like I want to go, hey. All right, we're doing car shots, but you want to ping pong back and forth inside. Can we have a second camera body and another two guys to go right. read the car while we're yep. shooting inside? And they're all like, well, we can't afford another second body. Do you want the other 75 crew members to do nothing while we take our A cam right. and strap it, strap it to the picture car? Right. And then they're like, well, do we have an exterior car and an interior car? Like, And you start getting into these questions that involve money. And especially with producers that haven't been in the game for a long time, you know, they'll step over a dollar to pick up a dime. Yeah. And... You know, I'd rather take the time on the, we're all on a full day rate. Right. And I know that it's super awesome to scout for two hours and then go play golf or do whatever you want to go yep. fishing. But like, let's take, we could potentially save ourselves on the shoot day. That's already right. going to be 12 hours. Maybe it doesn't have to be 17 hours if we burn another hour on scout day. Well, not only that, but like you're on the scout and it's an hour long scout and everybody at the end is like, okay, just email me. Just give me a phone call and let's figure this out later. It's like, no, let's, Let's figure it out now. Right. You know? Being paid to be here. Well, we're getting paid to be here for 12 hours. Like, mm -hmm. if it's a four-hour scout, oh, well, let's do it. Let's right. get, let's do it right mm -hmm. the first time. If you give me five hours to cut down a tree, I'm going to spend four hours sharpening the axe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's a great I one. Abra I think that's the Abraham Lincoln quote. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. We can look it up. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably one if of only there things. was this little yeah, black right. box. If that only we had some <laughs> yeah. sort of technology. technology. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you guys have been on set since 2012. I've been, yeah, I, I started getting paid for doing grip work and electric work in uh, 2012. So that was already digital. Yeah. DSLRs were, they were shooting movies on the 5D Mark II. Right. Um, yeah. Red One was still yeah, around. Well, Red was just they love that camera. Oh man, yes, people still do. <laughs> uh, yeah, raise a hand. Yeah, raise a hand on the yeah. people at home. How many? How many actually really love the red one still? Yeah. yeah. If you had told camera. me back then that down the road I'd be able to get one for a thousand bucks refurbished. Yeah. Oh god. Like, yeah, I can't wait to own one of those that no one's gonna want. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> it takes, it takes you five minutes to boot up. Or a long body. Value. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe how small they've made them now. Yeah. yeah. But so you guys don't you don't get, you don't remember the film days. With the film in the camera. I mean, we've shot plenty yes. of film. We've worked on many of uh, film shoots where they yeah. actually have the RE, whatever, bodies. I don't know, camera bodies. That 435. Got the loader. Yep. Yeah. Where Everything. we actually shoot film and you actually have to have your ratios yeah. right. You yep. actually, you can't just look at a monitor and be like, oh, you know what? I don't like that over there. You know, it's like you actually have to, you actually have to know what you're doing when it comes to lighting. Yeah. No, Especially absolutely. for film. A lot of DPs absolutely. still love to shoot in film. I'm glad that you said that because um, we covered a lot about what you guys do um, as far as like, Strapping cameras to stuff, playing with the big toys and cranes, making it safe. Um, but one of the other, I'd say a big, a big portion of the meat of your sandwich is shaping the light yeah. for the director of photography after yeah. he's requested the electricians to place a light source. It's then your job to slow it down, speed it up, yeah. cut it. Um, yeah. I don't, I'm using all the grip words that I know right now. Yeah. So <laughs> is there... Here's something that I'm, I mean, I, I think I know the answer to this, but 
The electricians have their own stands, right? You're not providing the stands for the light sources, No, right? not supposed to. But if the light source is to be mounted in the grid, they're going to rig that light to your pipe? Correct. So it, it all, it, it's all... It's a like dance, said, right? Yeah, it's a dance. You're going into yeah. this thing. It's like if you have a specific light that has to just go on a pipe hanger, sim- a simple light that we all need, Sky Panel S360 or mm-hmm. the S60, right? Most popular light on set the, Yeah, everybody's got one. Everybody's got two in the back of their Toyota Prius right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you we could provide you the clamps because sometimes you know for budget costs electrics won't put their clamps on there because they know oh the grip truck's going to come with a five ton and they're going to have a couple of extra clamps over right so use some of those um they're in charge of putting let's say like in this grid you'd have to put up you put up the lights right and then we have to build the box around it mm-hmm. right so we just have to well and and, and it depends on union too yeah. if, it, if it's a non-union oh, yeah. or union gig if it's a union gig it's cut and dry what you what you have to do yes. versus not my what department they have. not my department not my problem yeah. right but you know in a lot of non-union world like professional non-union worlds you know sometimes you help each other out like sure sometimes you're like hey man i gotta throw this 20 by up or fly swatter mm-hmm. um can i just give you guys the the points real quick you know, if it's three lights that they're throwing up in the grid, and most of the time they have a C wrench on them, and they can fully handle that job. You know, yeah. it's trustworthy. They know what they're doing. You right. know, but do you guys find that you like pairing up with certain gaffers? Absolutely. Yes, there yes. is certain electricians. Jeffrey, if you watch this, the best boy, best best boy ever I've worked with. Mm-hmm. Um, What's his last name? Give him a shout out. I don't know his last name. All right. I just know him as Jeffrey. The Jeff. The Jeffrey. Red. He knows who he is. Yeah, yeah Red. Red Sliding. He's a, an incredible Kyle guy. Kyle Bryson. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, dude, the list goes on. There's you, definitely. You work with people that are really good at mm-hmm. what they do, and they're happy about being there, and that's where I like to see people. Like, I don't like, I don't want to work with a guy that is 36 years old and pissed off and crusty yeah. all day and, yeah. and right. sleeping in the truck, drinking beers all day, and I have to pick up his slack, mm-hmm. and I'm not getting paid for it. And he's over there one getting stoned, and I'm like, what, what you know, where's, why is this guy even here? Well, it's just what we were talking about earlier, too. It's like we're on set with these people longer well, than we are with our family. Mm-hmm. Like 14 hours, 12, 16. Yeah. You have to be happy with who you're working with. Yeah. Totally. It's not like the Joe days. The Joe. The Joe. <laughs> the Joe. Get your big old cup of Joe. <laughs> my, one of my best friends who has since gone on to own an advertising company used to office PA for the Joe. Yeah. And I wish I would. I just don't want to put his name out there because I. I, I don't would, either. I would love to tell yeah. stories about oh. how things used to be. I walked off the set. Yeah, yeah. It's just oh, let's talk about walking off, walking off set. Have you ever walked off a set with an AD? I have been asked to leave. No, have you? So you've never personally made the decision to say, you know what, I'm done here. I'm going home. I have not. I have said in certain situations, if you decide to shoot this shot against my safety recommendations, I can't be on the clock. Right. And I've clocked out and left set and been invited back. I have a great story. We have an a- we had this AD. We were shooting at a school. And it was like a kid music video. It was like some teen pop stars or something. So we probably have 60 background kids in this hallway. And they want big lights and big diffusions at the end of the hallway, which basically closes off the hallway for the most part. Like, yes, you could get through it, but you have a blinding light in front of you that's just... You don't really, you don't, you don't, that's not your first instinct if a fire alarm goes off is to run into a giant light source. Right. right? Um, and so they had to, the AD came up to us, the grip department says, hey, we need some tape. And we're like, sure, here you go, here's some tape. And then he had his PAs um, take trash bags and tape over all of the um, fire escapes or fire detectors, smoke detectors. Right? Okay, for the diffusion? No, for, they had, uh, like smoke, the they heat, had smoke machines. The heat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had foggers and stuff. And oh, right, right yeah. Air diffusion. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, but they would set the smoke alarms off. So mm-hmm. they're like, oh, we don't want to alert the fire department and have these smoke alarms go off. So he had them all covered. Didn't work. Because it's probably steeped in other rooms. Anyway, mm-hmm. the fire alarm got shut off twice. And at that point, the um, fire department was like, no, we're coming. Mm-hmm. Like, we're coming there. There's obviously something wrong. We are showing up. Yep. The AD told everybody rip all of the plastic off the off of the uh, smoke detectors and then left complete just walked off gone yeah later bye. wow because he knew that in covering smoke detectors like tampering with smoke detectors is a federal offense yep. mm-hmm. and there's you know 35 in a hallway right 
and um, he was the one who had to answer for that. I've covered smoke detectors in brand new schools that have laser air diffusion detectors. Mm -hmm. So they can see the smoke before they can smell it. Yeah. But that was covered on the scout. We had right. the, everything was done right. They were like, right. you know what, if no, somebody smokes a cigarette no, at the gas station down the street, this thing goes off. Right. Yeah. So we had it powered down. We had somebody from the fire service with us, but right. I've never been like, yeah, I got to go. Yeah. We didn't have a fire marshal on set. Mm -hmm. It was that low budget music video. I call them no budget music videos. Cause yeah. it's like you don't even have a, <laughs> a fire. You, you have yeah. a bunch of people inside a building. You're closing off entrances and exits. You're yeah. putting up big lights. We've all been there. Yeah. yeah. No, I've, uh, I've, I've, more often than I care to think about now in the middle of all this shit, um, put the law down and been like, I can't be here for that. That's yeah. not a thing that I can do. I've never personally. I think I've heard you say that before. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're like, I'm going to have to go. By the way, for everybody who's watching, we all have worked together. Oh, yeah. I thought yeah. that was implied. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. Some people might not know. That's true. I assume all. a lot because I, you know, I'm just in here all the time. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, we've definitely all done, you know, we've worked together a yeah. number of times. Can't Last time I worked with you was on a golf course. That yes. was fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> with uh, Hillbilly. Yeah. We yeah. were just driving balls. Yes, we were on lunch. On lunch. Yeah. Um, so in closing, what it would be one thing that you guys wish everybody knew about being a grip? We work 12 to 20 hours a day. We still have to load a truck at the end of the day nine times out of ten. Um, we work really hard for it, and we don't do it for the appreciation. We don't do it for, like, you know, half the time we don't do it for the video because we don't care. Mm -hmm. We do it for the challenge. Um, if you think gripping sounds fun and you 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 probably grew up playing, like, Connects and Legos and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. And we, we've had guys where they come in from an, a, you know, a six to eight hour day job for a normal job for them and they're beat at lunch and you're like, better rethink what you're better doing, Better saddle up, dude. Yeah. yeah. What's the one thing you wish the rest of the crew had a better understanding of the grip world on? I think like what I mentioned very at the very top of this conversation is, you know, and I'm not, I'm not degrading any other department. Mm -hmm. It's just most departments have a certain task with layers that they have to focus on. Mm -hmm. Just remember your grips have to have their hands in everything, every department. Right. We have to do something for every department. Just remember that. Respect yep. us. You know, we're not just these little grungy assholes running around the set. Like, yeah, we're there to help you, but also treat us right. What yep. I would say that I want every mm -hmm. department to know in production is do not piss off grips. Yeah, don't. The last don't thing you want on set is a pissed off grip. Thing. Just it's just gonna make your day so much slower. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like we're all a team here. Yes, we're all different departments. We all have different jobs. Yeah, but we are all working towards a common goal. Let's work together. Right. Let's get this done safely. Let's go home to our families. Let's go to bed. Get up, do it again the next day. Yep. Yeah. My thing would be when people assume that something falls into your department without asking. And yeah. the first closest example I can say is always pipe and drape with the art department. Yeah. I'm not here to shit <laughs> on the art department. <laughs> yeah, right. But even on, it goes back to the scout conversation. Exactly. Like we're going to hang a pipe and drape. And I look at the production designer and I go, do you have any riggers on your team? Yep. What? Why would I do that? Isn't there a grip here? Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Don't. Are you, you going to look the key grip in the face and ask him to hang this for you, or am I going to do that? Yeah. Well, we're hanging 15 lights and our own green screen and all these things. Yeah, it's like but when it happens all the time. When it's lunchtime, I don't get to call Grace. Mm -hmm. I have to ask you permission for Grace to finish the shot. Right. It's the same thing. When art needs something hung from you guys, the, it, 99 times out of 100, it's an assumption that you guys are going to help him out, and that's your job to do that. Right, and that that's the one that boils my blood, and I'm just like, guys, let's just ask each other, let's communicate, let's yeah. talk about it. If right. you need help on it, and that's actually probably one of the, it's probably the number one thing I want to tell any grip out there, whether you've been doing this for a month, five years, ten years, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Yeah, if you don't know how to rig something, don't, don't do, do it. it. Right. If you're a period. PA, period. No, it doesn't matter what department you're in. If you yeah. if you have at, like, we have to do we have to put a light up here you don't know what you're doing you don't know how to put an overhead frame up you don't know how to tie a knot properly don't do it speak up yeah. say hey go up to your key grip go up to whoever who does know what to do call somebody call somebody that you grew up with yeah. and say hey I, i'm i'm in a little bit of a binder right now i i, I don't know what i'm doing yeah my big doing it. my biggest thing is like and again i'm not i'm not shitting on pas or anything but like when they think that they're trying to help out and right. they try to like move a c stand or something don't do it 
Right. Just just let us, union or non-union, just mm-hmm. let us do it because if that C stand falls because of what you did, right? It's guess who they're going to be looking at? That's you. They're going to be looking at the key grip. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think the big the big theme is like asking permission and communication. Communication. Yeah. Hey, key. do you mind if I move this Apple box? Oh, Not I'll get it. All. Or I'll, I'll have one of my guys get it. Or yeah. sure, kid, go ahead and move that Apple box. Yeah. Right. But it's the respect of asking for mm-hmm. permission. Which I it's think not even the, the respect thing. It's, no, it's more it, of just it, a safety thing. It is It is a respect, though, because it's well, like you, yeah. you'll you give, like for camera, for instance, we always give them at least two, three C-stands, a couple of Apple boxes, a couple of cartilages. Three standard thing. You know mm-hmm. they're going to come asking for it. Right. And you always know the young kid is like walking up to the grip truck with his hands in his pockets. He's like, oh, I don't know if I'm in the right spot. And you're like, yeah, I know what you need. Come over here. Right. Yeah. But uh, you just, <clears throat> you just got to ask. And, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, I don't, I don't have this stuff. I need help. Or the, one talk. of the other bigger things is like when somebody does not ask and takes a piece of our equipment. Oh, yeah. Electric or whoever. And then at the end of the day, we're shot. running around trying to find this last because sometimes yeah. we're renting other people's trucks. And then we're running around trying to find this last shot bag. Mm-hmm. And it's in makeup department. Right. You know, and it's like this just costed me. 30 minutes of running around trying to find this one sandbag of OT for five of guys. Of OT for yeah. five guys. Right. For a so we could wrap up our truck. Right. That's another thing like production's got to think about or just people on set. It's like, I'm not here to like try to keep tabs on my gear at the end of the day. Just ask. Let me know that you're grabbing this and then I can make a mental note of that. Right. Done deal. So, uh, I guess in summation. Yeah. Who says that? Yeah, it's not you just did. To wrap it up, <laughs> like here, bud. Smaller words. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't read. To, to put a nail in this coffin. <laughs> there we go. Um, where, COVID aside, right? Yeah. Uh, where do you see the movie business going with technology, like affecting? Because now, now we have techno cranes, which are computerized cranes. We have mm-hmm. motion control, which is, I mean, you guys kind of help those dudes out, but those are kind of self-sufficient dudes. Mo- Moco guys are way smarter than we are. Yeah, those yep. guys are, those guys sure. are real engineers. Those guys are rocks, rock those stars, guys are rock stars. But, Any Moco yeah. guy that runs that shit. Is just, but let's job. okay, let's take uh, motorized gimbals for example. Right, mm-hmm. they want to strap those to new and different things every day, and like mm-hmm. send it down a stairwell. And um, what's it like adapting to? like future technology like i know the camera guys have to read their volumes and volumes of shit we to have, stay up on new cameras every we year we have this one thing and it's called a mitchell mount and a castle nut mm-hmm. and that's pretty much all we have to be mindful of is all of our gear has stayed the same since probably the 60s yeah that's like, one very beautiful thing about being a grip you can buy mm-hmm. it we we have a company that we work for kung fu grip he's had c-stands that are older than i am I and mean, i'm 26 and yeah. i guarantee you those c-stands will work just as good as a brand new one doesn't matter or better because they're but they've been around for 30 years mm-hmm. you know and that's fine but that's that's how different like camera is in technical world the, the camera electric, heads with leds yeah and lights and everything light doesn't last more than x amount of hours where a knuckle is going to last you 10 years right yeah. you know but that's we, a beautiful thing we will always have the connects and the legos and the erector set toys that we always have Mm -hmm. and it's always going to be simple ways to figure out complicated solutions but you're always going to have that connection point so it's like yes i can rig you all of this but now you have to figure out how to put your head here right even though i give you the right receiver that's going to mount your stuff properly Mm -hmm. now we have to figure everything else out i think you know don't quote me on this but i think grips will definitely always be needed on set for just figuring out those very complicated shots and you know how am i going to mount this camera across this canyon Mm -hmm. somebody's got to be there to figure that out that's right and that's going to be us so if people want uh to find you guys on the social adam what's your social uh my instagram is adam underscore shane bauer uh at oh at yeah. gmail.com now uh, G- <laughs> i'm so used to saying that yeah and here comes the flood of more trash emails yeah i know um, um is that your real email you should change it or no i'll bleep, um, it, I'll bleep it out I'll, I'll give the instagram it's it's my first name adam and underscore shame bauer s-h-a-m-b-o-u-r oh there's a u in there i'll look it up to make sure and then nick what's your insta it's lundstrom photo l-u-n-d-s-t-r-o-m photo do you shoot are you a photographer also uh, yes. yeah you should you should check it out. I will. I, I do stuff that's like um, it's about light. It's, it's more about light drawings, but not mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> I don't manipulate light. I manipulate the camera to make the drawings. So yeah. That's kind of weird. I don't know. Cool. It's like, cool. Like light painting stuff? It's Yeah, it's light painting, long exposures. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of foreground, lights in far distance, long. I don't know. Yeah. It's really hard to explain, but if you could, if you look at it, check it out. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Well, your um, social handles will be under your faces through the whole episode, so people Great. will be able to stop and check it out. Good, Did you get to play with any of the bioluminescence while I was here? Oh my God! Uh, no, I want we. I we want just to went see fishing it so yesterday. Bad. It's over. I went the other day, but you can still go south. It's still towards San Diego. Man. But I took my DSLR out shooting the other night. I saw some of those photos, and I couldn't great. get it. I, I no, mean, you got you got some of it. If you blow that up yeah. to raw, it's, it's it, super out of focus. A photo, yeah. a photo does not do luminous. Just I grew up no. in Washington, mm -hmm. and I like I said, I grew up in, on a sailboat in the ocean. We had many a nights where we've had bioluminescence algae up there, mm -hmm. and that is yeah, it's magical. It's I like seeing the see. northern lights. That is just yeah. something different. Yeah. And then to wrap it up, wrap it up. Favorite job you've ever worked on? This. Oh, favorite job. Um, oh, God. There's so many. Uh, Most memorable. Most memorable Probably Legion. Job. Legion TV show. You did the, the series? Yeah. I did the season two promos. I did uh, season two and three with Manny Durant. With Killer Grip. Man, what a good cast. Yeah. What's your uh, favorite? I did. I key gripped this feature called the Road Movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Richards is the DP, and uh, it should be coming out. Should have been coming out the beginning of this year. Hopefully, the end of this year. But it's called the Road Movie. Um, he's also the DP that shot the Rider. Um, it's a really good one. That that's hands down most memorable. Cool. Fifty-three awesome. day shoot. Wow. A bunch of different states. That's a lot of shooting. There was an East Coast or the West Coast. Yeah, dude, it was it was three months of my life. Yeah. I got, I got engaged over Christmas on that time. That that was. It's a good time. That's a memorable one. Yep. Awesome. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the Safety Meeting Podcast. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us, seriously. And, uh, we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. This show's a piece of shit.